So for the first uh, of these videos, we just want to really set up the whole context of acids and bases. And so to do that, we're going to look at some of the nomenclature or the way in which we name uh, different compounds and also the properties. Now, hopefully this first section will be pretty much a um, uh, opportunity for you to recall some of the work that you did in the junior years. Um, and some of it will also link to some things that we looked at in the year 11 course. But primarily what we're interested in here is just the uh, ways in which we go about naming these different types of acids. Now, I think it's probably worth you not necessarily downloading the entire book because the red book is massive. Um, but the system that we're using is a system known as the IUPAC system, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And it is basically the system that is used by all chemists around the world to uh, ensure or at least to decrease ambiguity and try and ensure that we're all communicating about the same compounds in the same way. Again, the ones that you see listed here are just a very small number of the acids that are, um, exist, but we will be um, looking at most of these because they're the most common ones. Uh, and it'll give you a little bit of an idea of what happens. I think probably the most important thing at this stage to set up in terms of acids is if we look at this first one, uh, which is hydrogen chloride. So a compound made from hydrogen and chlorine. Um, but when this is in aqueous solution, it becomes, uh, the solution is acidic. And we then refer to it as hydrochloric acid. Now, one of the most interesting things about this is that the hydrogen and the chlorine are held together in a covalent bond. Uh, and that's why we would refer to this substance as hydrogen chloride. But in solution, what happens is the electrons which were being shared in this bond will uh, actually be taken by the chlorine. We will say that in the solution it ionizes. So this is one of the important um, characteristics of many of these acids is that they become electrolytes in solution. They are ions and therefore will conduct uh, an electric uh, current. When this ionizes, of course, what you get are two ions, an H plus and a Cl minus. Now, the most important thing to look at here is the H plus, because the H plus is, uh, in its most common isotope of hydrogen, uh, hydrogen one, is a simple proton, just a proton. There's no neutron because there's the, the mass is one, so that's the proton. And of course, there's no electron because the electron has now gone to the chlorine and formed the anion. So the cation is actually a proton. Now, this idea of acids um, containing a proton in solution is a very important one. And we're going to look at how the definition of acids have changed over time further in this um, series of videos. But for now, this is an important concept just to introduce here. To go through uh, each of these, and I won't write them all down, but I will go through them all for you. The combination of hydrogen and fluorine forms hydrofluoric acid. The next one is sulfurous and old people like me do not like having to spell sulfur or sulfuric or sulfurous with a f rather than a ph but it is the correct way of doing so um, uh, the next one is sulfuric acid uh, nitrous and nitric and then the last two i'm sure you're also familiar with well the second last one carbonic acid is a key uh, acid that's present in um, uh, carbonated soft drinks and the last one is phosphoric acid 